Yeah. Welcome to church. You know, we're in a series called We the Church. We the Church. We the Church. And uh, this morning, I'm going to talk about one of our core values, which is called Empowering Your Potential. You know, but let's pray before we begin, okay? Father, we thank you for gathering us here together. Father, we thank you for the celebration of being able to dedicate a child and their parents to the Lord. What a wonderful act of love and kindness and faith, Lord. I pray such blessing on them and the entire family clan that is gathered here today. Father, thank you that we're here to hear your word too as well. Open up our ears to hear your word. Cause this word to come alive. Illuminate our hearts with the word of God. So much darkness, so much other things we hear. We need to hear your word because it corrects every imbalance that we might have heard throughout the week. Lord, your truth sets us free. Let the truth of God minister to our heart, soul, spirit, body, and give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Empowering your potential. You know, sometimes <clears throat> you, you listen to, you see what's happening in the world, and if you listen to mainstream media, which is not the best thing to listen to, you know, but if you listen to anything, you, you, you observe and you wonder what's happening in the world and where and how God is involved. Don't you feel that way? Like, where's God in this world? With all the negative things that we're experiencing, all the difficulties politically, economically, you know, uh, and all the things, the catastrophes and the natural disasters and things that are happening in the world, we wonder, is God? Is God really involved? You know, like, in, you know, I'm going to tell you, but in each season, every season, God's sovereign hand is at working, at work, and he's shaping the course of history, and he's, and he's preparing us for the ultimate revelation of his kingdom. Say kingdom. Kingdom. Listen, the kingdom is God's purpose. Why did Jesus come? To bring the realm, the rule and reign of God, the kingdom of God, to come to earth. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, pray to the Father, your kingdom come. It's all about the coming of the kingdom. Jesus said, and this is not, this, the, screen, the scripture's not on your screen. Luke chapter 11, verse 20. Jesus said, if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then know this, that the kingdom of God has come upon you. And later on in Luke's gospel, chapter 17, he said to, to his disciples, behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. It's come. It's come. The kingdom of God has come. That word kingdom is actually two words, king and dom, the king's domain. Listen, Jesus said, the kingdom of God has come. But I want to tell you, he's also saying, and it's still coming. It has come, but it's still coming. It's still advancing. And the vehicle and the means by which through God is advancing his and establishing his kingdom, his reign and rule is through the church, the church. We, the church. What an awesome privilege. Jesus is building the church, the one that he said that the gates of hell will not prevail against. Amen? A powerful church, an overcoming church, a church that's the highest institution on the face of the earth. We, the church. Jesus is building his church. And I believe that's why every church, every local church, for, that Jesus is building needs to have a very clear-cut vision and a mission. Cit and, and City Light Church, our local church, we have a vision, we have vision and a, mi and a mission statements, statements. You know, if it's statement, it means it's meant to be stated. Our, our City Light Church vision, and if you're a City Lighter, I want you to repeat after me. Say these words. City Light Church vision, it's up there. It is, say after me, say out loud, reaching people for Jesus one person at a time. Jesus Christ, one person at a time. City Light's mission, say it with me, is making biblical disciples through relational environments, through teams, through small groups. Every church should have a mission and a vision. Every church needs to have core values. What are core values? They are fundamental beliefs. They are the goals of our church. Here's our goal. Here's our beliefs. Here's our goals. We have five main core values on your screen. First one, bridging the culture. We need to bridge the culture. Why? We need to reach people for Jesus because everybody needs Jesus. 
Secondly, living in authentic relationships. Why? Because everybody needs a home. The church is a family. The church is a home. Third, third core value, empowering potential. Empowering potential, your potential, because everybody has something to contribute. Fourth core value, we are to be driven by compassion. The same compassion that Jesus had in the Bible, and we read what he did in the Bible, should be the driving force of our ministry to reach the world around us. One, one more. We're called to be a church for generations. All generations. The church isn't just a bunch of old people or senior citizens or a bunch of youth. It's all ages, young, old, and every single one in between. We should be a church of three generations, kids, children, grandchildren, maybe even great-grandchildren. We're a church for generations. Not only are we to be a church for generations, we're a church for all ethnicities, every creed, every color, every language, you know, from every, every, every color, from all different cultural backgrounds are part of the church. We're to be like the church in heaven. You know, we're like to be like the church in heaven. And these are our core values. And these describe who we are. And they determine what we are to do. They help guide us. They keep us on track. And they dictate our behavior. And they determine our culture, which I said last week, which we want to be by design and not by default. By default. We want to determine the type of church we are called to be. Doesn't that make sense? Last week I talked about living in authentic relationships, which, which is one of our core values. Why? Because everyone needs Jesus and everyone needs a home. The church is a family where authentic relationships are formed. Listen, God made us for relationships, didn't he? You think about what Jesus did. Jesus formed a small group of authentic relationships, and he released them to change the world with the gospel. Church is a family. Also, we're authentic, not just relationships, but friendships are to be lived out. We live up our, 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 our friendships and our lives through the church. So I want to encourage you, don't neglect the opportunity to gather together. You know, gather together and always have an open seat for somebody who needs a relationship. And I tell you, people are looking for relationships out there. And listen, we are on a spiritual journey, aren't we? So let's enjoy the journey with lifelong friends. Best place to make friends. Today, I'm going to talk about empowering potential, your potential, which is another core value. I'm going to step back and say this. The moment that you received Jesus Christ into your heart, the moment that you were born again, your potential changed. Your potential changed. You were called into something bigger, something divine. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1, the great apostle Paul, said these words, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Say with me, I have been called by God. I have been called by God. There is a holy, set-apart call of God on your life. And maybe God is going to reveal that to you today. Verse 7, the Apostle Paul said, He has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, When he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives, and he gave gifts to his people. He gave you a gift. Did you receive a gift? You've got a gift. Verse 11, Now these are the gifts that Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. This is what we call a five-fold ministry. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in the faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord measuring up to the full and complete stature of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. 
I tell you, God wants the church today to grow up. To grow up. We, then we will no longer be like immature children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so, lies so clever they sound like the truth. I tell you, there are so many winds of new teaching that are blowing in throughout the world, and they're even blowing to the, to the church. And some of these winds are not truth. They're distorted. They're, 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 they're compromised. And, and, and we need to recognize them. And it's so easy to get tricked because they sound like the truth, and they seem to be coming from godly people. But there's, there's something happening even in that realm. Truth is... The enemy is trying to distort the truth, compromise the truth. Christ is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does what? Its own special work. It helps other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. That's the way church should be. Amen? Healthy, growing, full of love. Listen, you've been called by God. You've been called by God. Everyone has a calling. Everyone has a purpose on your, on your screen. Everyone has something to contribute. Every one of you do. Question, do you know how to make this house a home? Do you know how to make this house your home? You know how? Here's the answer. By contributing by giving, by serving. That's how you make this house your home, right? Even Jesus said about himself, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for the many. Didn't you say that? Ecclesiastes 4, 7. Paul said he has given each one of us a special gift, through the generosity of Christ. Paul says he gives to each one a special gift, distinct, peculiar, unique, different. Question, do you know what else that says about you and me? You know what that says? It says that you are important. You are so important to the plan of God on this planet and to his church. You are so vital. You are so, so important. Verse 11, Paul said, Christ gave to the church the apostles of Paul, the apostles, prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. And their responsibility is to do what? Equip. Equip. Equip God's people to do what? To do His work, right? To do His work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. To equip God's people to do His work. The job of our staff is to empower you to do His work work, right? And most churches have this upside down. Sometimes I have this upside down. The pastors, the leaders, the teachers are here to equip you and to release you into the very special call of God that He has on your, on your life. Do you agree with that? Because without you functioning in your call and in your giftings, the church cannot go ahead. The church cannot become healthy and the church does not grow. Imagine your, your body without your kidney or your kidney or your liver not functioning. Imagine it. What would happen to your body? Right? Everyone has a calling. Everyone has a purpose. And I think of the few, uh, just of the few people who are here uh, here at, at City Light who are empowered. I think about Jason and Jody and Jenna, you know, and the rest of the team. But you guys, you know, they lead our worship. What would we have? What, what would church be like without worship this morning? What if I just got up and began, began just talking, just blurting out a bunch of stuff? We want worship. We want the presence of God. Yeah, yeah amen. You know, think about Monica Malda. She leads our prayer force. You know, and we need more people in our prayer force, right? We need, we, we need to pray over the heavenlies with the culture, what's happening, you know, in the spiritual realm, prayer penetrates and influences and changes things in the spiritual realm. We need more people in the prayer force. I think of John and Lena Fair. They're not, I don't, they might be here, sitting here today, but they lead up our AV team and they, and they oversee our online team. And we have a great team of people serving. Their, thank you guys for serving. serving. What would it be like if we didn't have the AV team there this morning? 
Oh, this, I think they did that on purpose. <laughs> Is it working now? Am I, am I operative? <laughs> okay. They get, they're giving themselves high fives. They planned that on purpose. You guys. I think about Jessica Watson. You know, Jessica Watson oversees our kids' church. Wow. You know, what would it be like if we didn't have someone overseeing, you know, a team of people, teachers and helpers? You know, Megan Jansen. Megan Jansen, you know, we brought her up. We talk about authentic relationships. I remember, you know, years ago we met Megan and Rick and Donna in Tabor. You know, how many years ago was that? And we were babysitting Megan. She was a toddler. You know, and she used to say, uh, and she'd sit on the, chip, on the couch and say, I want chips, chips. Chips. She wants. She loved potato chips, you know. And we were, you know. Now look, where's Megan? Where's Megan? <laughs> she's serving. She's she's our young adults leader, and now she's taking over our, our, our as a youth leader over uh, another grade from over Helen, you know, and from Helen, and, and wow, she, and she's building, getting people on her team too as well, and she's building a great team. I can go on and on, but all these people, they are adding and they're building teams. Question: What would we do? Without these gifts functioning here today, what would we do? Wow, imagine if we didn't have kids' ministry and we got like 50, 60 kids and we just stick them into two rooms, close the door and says, have at it. What would happen? <laughs> Chaos, right? You wouldn't want to bring your kids back here. Wow. You know, you know what it is? It's about amazing people just serving here today. Amen? Amen. Give them a hand. In Canada, in North America, there's a trend, it's, it's called church attenders, or church consumerism. And they have an attitude called WIFM, W is an acronym, W-I-F-M, which stands for what's in it for me. And, no, when you, and, and you know, when you come into the church, don't have that, atom, have that attitude, well, what's in it for me, right? A lot of people, they come to church, maybe, you know, maybe once or maybe even less a month. Some people only give when their heart's really stirred. And because of that, you know, we're not making a mark. We're not advancing like we should, right? We've, we've, we've forgotten that we are all called by God. All called by God, according to His grace. And that we're, we are not called just to attend church. We're called to be the church. Be the church. Believers are called to take their place. Amen? You're called to take your place. Someone said, church is where what we are a part of is bigger than the part we play, yet everyone's part is vitally important. So important. You know, Leon, Pastor Leon Fontaine uh, once was sharing about a guy that came to him, a leader that came to him and thought he was so hot, so gifted, and said, Pastor Leon, I want to be speaking. I want to, have, I want to share the pulpit with you. I want to do these things, and I'm a great leader. I've gone, I'm gifted and everything, and, and, you know, and, and I should be doing this. And Pastor Leon said to him, you know what? We don't need you. He's saying, we don't need, he was saying, we don't need anyone. We don't need anyone. But at the same time, we need everyone. See, what he's saying is, no pers one person is indispensable, but every person's contribution makes a difference. You can make a difference. Even if it's the, 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 it seems like the simplest task, you make a big difference. Amen? You know, we always say here at City Light, that volunteers are the backbone of the church. And that is so true. But they really are. So listen, when you volunteer, when you step in to do, take on a task or take on a role, listen, something happens. Something can happen. You not only take on a task or a role, but you, you can actually end up stepping into the very call of God that He has for your life. You never know. Example, Mother Teresa. Who's heard of Mother Teresa? Just about everybody. Wow. You no, know, she passed away a few years ago. She went right into the slums of India, Calcutta, India, the worst place to meet with the most beat up, broken, hurting, sick people, orphans, and what it worked. But, you know, it all happened in about the year 1949. She was teaching at a, at, an, at a Catholic home, wealthy position, but she met a woman on the streets of Calcutta. The hospital, a mom, a hospital had rejected her. 
She was suffering greatly. She was so sick. Her body was covered with sores. And, was, and the sores were filled with bugs. And she took that woman that the hospitals rejected, and she took him into her home. And she nursed that woman. And when that woman was angry and was saying, leave me alone, but she said, and she said, why are you doing this? And because she was just loving that woman. And listen, and when, when Mother Teresa stepped in to help a desperate, desperate mom, she stepped into her destiny and into her call. Amen? Amen. You know, I think one of the greatest ministries we have here is, is a ministry called Divorce Care. I know Rick and Donna, or Donna was really involved, Rick and Donna involved, but I remember um, John and Sandra, uh, Dick, John and Sandra, are you guys here today? I thought I saw them here today. But, oh, there you are, somewhere. But I, I remember, there we are. You know, embarrass them again, you know, but John and Sandra came from broken marriages. And they end up going to this, they needed healing. They end up both going, they met each other, they went, they went to this course called Divorce Care and with Donna. And uh, Donna asked them to get involved too as well. And eventually, they, they took on that role and that task, and what an impact it is making today. There are so many people, and maybe some of you have, are here today, and you've actually done, gone through, or you're still going through divorce care ministry. And what they're doing is, is they're impacting lives, not just individual lives, but they're in fact impacting families and generations for the future. It's a, it's a great ministry, this ministry called divorce care. And I believe that there's a great ministry that's ready to happen when it's not just a task or a role that you're stepping into, but it's actually leading to the very call of God in your life. Do you understand that? Listen, when we volunteer, when we volunteer, when we serve, we are building His church. We are building this church, and there's nothing more that we can do, and someone said, to be in sync with Jesus than to build His church. Don't underestimate. Don't minimize the task, the call of God on your life and what you're doing today. We're talking about empowering potential. Let me say this. Your potential was never just about you. Your potential is woven into relationships, authentic relationships, covenantal relationships with one another. You know? and, and we never possess, you'll, you'll never possess it as yourself. You always possess your call, your potential as a people of God, the church. And that's why people who, who leave, who give up the church and leave the church will never fulfill their potential because the power is in being together. Amen? The power is in being together. And that's why Paul said to the Philippians in 1 verse 27, church, church, contend as one man for the cause of the gospel. One heart, one mind, one spirit as one people, as a team, right? On, on your screen, on your, this is such an important point. The place of empowerment, the place that you get empowered is through the local church. That's where you get empowered. Each one of us has gifts, talents, and abilities, and they are meant to be used to serve, to serve God, to serve each other, and to serve the world, the unbelievers. Three places. Three places. It's a threefold place of service. God wants us to serve. We've been given gifts, talents, and abilities. And, and I, I could venture and say that some of you don't know what spiritual gift Holy Spirit has given you. I think there are many people. I, what are your, what is this? What is, you know, God, the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians 12, He's given each and one of us a manifestation of the Spirit. There are gifts of God that He gives us. And every single believer, when he's born again, is given a not just natural gift, a natural ability, but a spiritual gift right from heaven. It's God-given. The question is, do you know what that gift is? If you don't know what that gift is, how can you operate in it? Is that, am, I, am I right there? I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. But, you know, this is the very reason why we do, one of the very reasons why we do growth track. Not to just to let you know what our church is all about, the distinctives, and how we relate to the gospel cause of, of God in the Bible, 
but also to release you and to empower you to believe that minister who preaches the gospel to the world. And you need the power and the gifts of God in order to effectively do that. That's why he gives you gifts to empower you to preach the gospel, to minister to people, to help people, to serve people. And if you don't know what those gifts are, how are you going to do it? That's the very reason, one of the reasons why we have growth track. And that's, I looked at the sign-up sheet, and we have 15 people. I thought, we should have 50 people there. Listen, when you get released into your call and your ministry, there's nothing more satisfying, more fulfilling than to be used by God with the gifts and the power that he has given you. Amen? You will never be happy. You will never find that sense of satisfaction until you know those things. And God's not trying to hide them from you. He's trying to show them to you and release those things in you. And he does it through the church. The place of empowerment is the local church. So, to help you identify your spiritual gifts and abilities so that we can empower you, release you into your call. If you haven't signed up, you need to sign up. Four weeks, every Tuesday night, from about 7 to 8.30. It's not very long, but I tell you, it's worth it. Because it's all about you, releasing you, your call, your purpose in your life. Amen? Sign up. Maybe you're not even a part of our church. You're welcome to still take this course. Just take it back. Amen? Empower, empower, empower. That word means to give power and authority to, to enable, to permit. It's, that's what we do. It's through the local church and through the authority given through us as leaders that people are released. Give an example. Like Paul and Silas in the, in the early church called Antioch, Acts 13, 2. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Listen, we want to empower people to do the things that promote the mission, the vision and mission of our house so that this house, the local church, can grow stronger and can grow bigger. We want to reach more people. You know, so we don't want to empower people just to do their own thing. You know, listen, this is so true. I wrote this down. Empowerment comes with the responsibility of staying within the vision of the house. We need to be called. We need to be submitted under the authority and accountable to finish. And it's so true. You cannot be over unless you're under. You cannot be over unless you're under. Every single pe person, every single believer needs to be under authority. Amen? Otherwise, you're a law to yourself. Empowerment comes with responsibility. I believe that God is calling people like never before, like never be before, but with all our potential, all our potential, we're useless to God unless we are yoked and harnessed to His plan for us. Amen? We, we see... What time is it? Okay. I'm going to try to go through this quick. We see the power, we see the power of empowerment in the Old and the New Testament. Exodus chapter 18. Exodus chapter 18. God has just rescued uh, the, the nation or the people of Israel uh, out of uh, bondage, and he took them into the desert, and the people are all standing around, and two million people, they've got issues and arguments between them. So Moses has served as a judge. So from morning till evening, he's trying to solve all the disputes for cases for two million people, and his father-in-law thought he was nuts. Exodus 18, 17, Moses' father-in-law replied, what you are doing is not good. You and all these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. But select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain. Appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Have them serve as judges for the people at all times, but have them bring every difficult case to you, the simple ones they can decide for themselves. What was, what was Jethro trying to tell David? You know, he's saying, carry this load together. Empower some people. And that's what they did. He said, that will make your load lighter because they will share it with you. And if you do this and God so commands, you will be able to stand the strain and all these people will go home satisfied. Moses listened. He did it. Acts chapter 8. That's Old Testament, New Testament. Acts chapter 8, the church was exploding. It was growing like crazy. 
believers were, and, and the church not only met the spiritual needs, they met the physical needs of people. Well, there were lots of widows. There was Hebrew widows, there was Greek widows, and the Hebrew the widows were upset because they were getting overlooked in the food distribution that the Hebrews had. So the apostles said, hey, we've got to do something. But, you know, but we, our responsibility is to teach and preach the word, not to distribute food. So let's go and then let's, let's select five men full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, and let's get them to do it, to oversee that. So that's what they did. Here's what happened. Acts 6, verse 6. These seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them, and they laid their hands on them. So God's message continued to spread. And the number of the believers greatly increased in Jerusalem. Why? Why? The message continued to spread. Why? Because people were empowered. They, were pre- they, they didn't stop preaching the word, start waiting on tables. I mean, that's great. It's, you know, waiting on tables is a very powerful ministry, isn't it? It's important. You know, it's still a great... Imp- you know, deacons are very important in the house. I want to say this. The church is so much. The church is so much like a team sport. Team sport. Question, what would happen if everyone showed up and did their part? What would happen to my Edmonton Oilers if some of the main players did not show up for that first round? What would happen? They would lose, right? They would lose the game. Well, you know, it's important that every single person show up. What would happen if every person was empowered in their potential? What would happen in our, in our church? What would happen in our city? What would, how many lives could we touch and change if everybody did their part? So I want to encourage you, get on a team. Get on a team. Get your life moving forward. Move forward to care. Get, move forward to minister. Serve on a ministry team. Very quickly, here's some of the things you can serve on. You could get on a team and serve as an usher, a greeter, a youth helper, uh, a children's church teacher, a children's church helper, a young adult, get on the young adults team, uh, uh, become a small group leader, uh, get on the hospitality team, the communion team, the prayer ministry team, the kitchen helpers team, the maintenance team, media or sound team, PowerPoint person, worship team, Holy Garland uh, barista, mom's ministry team, connections info booth person, administering project team, events team, let's uh, on and on and on. Let's form outreach teams. Everybody should be on a team. Amen? Everyone should be serving somewhere. I'm going to list these guys. I'm not even part of our church to come serve with us. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse 4. Just as our bodies have been many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We who are many parts of one body, we are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is, if it is giving, give generously. If God has given you a, a leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. If you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. 1 Corinthians 12, 27, all of you together are Christ's body. Each of you is a part of it. Here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church. First are the prophets, second are the prophets, third are the teachers, then those who do miracles. There are people that God wants to use right here to do miracles. Those who have gifts of healing, there are people here that God wants to release that gift of healing through you. Those who can help others, those who have the gift of leadership, those who speak in unknown languages. So many different spiritual gifts. Every single one is needed. This is so valuable for the church to move forward. So I want to tell you once again, get, please, get in the game. Get involved. Get active in your call because every part is needed. Every single one of us, I believe, we have this within our spirit, in our heart. We want to make a difference. We all want, we, we, every part of us, uh, uh, there's a part in every one of us that dreams and yearns to make a difference in making life. You know why? It's because we are not called to be ordinary. You are not called to be a bystander. You are not called to be an observer. You're called to be a disciple following after Jesus, living out your full potential. Amen? George Bernard Shaw wrote these words. True joy in life is being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one. 
being thoroughly worn out before you are thrown on the scrap heap. Being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clod of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world not devote itself to making you happy. Wow, what great words, right? What great words. You know, it, life is more about, more than about living a small, safe, comfortable life. John Maxwell said, it is critically important to realize that authentic joy involves much more than the experience of personal pleasure. pleasure. It's not about living a small, safe, comfortable life. It's, about, it's all about grace. Read this last scripture with you, and I'm basically done. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, Amplified Version. For we are His workmanship, His own masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually formed, renewed, ready to be used for good works which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which He set so that we would walk in them, living the, what kind of life? The good life which he prearranged and made us ready for. Wow, we all have potential. We all have something to contribute. So, question on the screen. What will you do? What will you do with what God has given you? You know what the Bible tells us? That he set the exact time, he's given us time, he set the exact time and place that we should live. Exactly. But he not only gave us time, he gave us talents, he gave us gifts, and he gave us abilities so that you can live out your maximum potential for God. Amen? Amen. Amen. What will you do with what God has given you? Bow your heads, close your eyes. Thank you, Father. Will you agree with me in prayer? Lord Jesus, I pray that today that we all get it, that we truly understand that we are fearfully and wonderfully created that we are here for a divine purpose, a destiny, to make a massive difference with my life, that I'm part of something much bigger. I'm a part uh, than than myself. I'm a part of this house. I'm called to be on a team. I'm called to use my gift to serve others. And together, we will reach the world for Jesus, one person at a time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads for just another minute or so. The Bible tells us that the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life, and it's a relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. It's a gift. It's something that you just receive. You don't work for a gift. You receive it. It's all been done for you. And today you can receive it today. If you're here today, you've never personally received the gift of eternal life, invited Christ into your heart, and you have to confess it. You have to confess it with your mouth and you've got to believe it in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if you confess it and you believe it, you can receive it today. So simple. Christ did it all on the cross. He did it all. He shed his blood. He did all the work for you. And if that's you, you can receive the gift of eternal life. You can receive salvation. You can receive the hope of heaven when you pass from this place. And you can receive a brand new life in this place that's totally different. A new start, a new beginning. If that's you, then I'm going to invite you to just believe in Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross to pay you for his sin, and just receive him into your heart by saying this very simple prayer. If that's you, and you want to receive Christ today, repeat these words after me. Say it with all your heart. Ready? Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me for all my sins, all those things that I've been ashamed of. Lord Jesus, I believe that you suffered on the cross and you shed your blood, and I believe you rose again. And now I ask you to come into my heart by your Spirit. Be my Lord and be my Savior forever. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen.